Good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you are, welcome. You might or might not have noticed that I was absent from YouTube the last two or three weeks. Well, after the run of performances of Menotti's The Telephone and The Old Maid and The Thief, I was a bit exhausted and needed a break. The performances went really well and I'm so proud of my students. They were fantastic. But now I'm happy to be back. Last week I was watching an episode of one of my favorite TV shows, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Oh yes. And in one intro they used the following music. Now then, this one's for all... I'm sure you all recognized it immediately. And some of you thought, yeah, that's from the second part of Richard Wagner's Ring des Nibelungen, Die Walküre. True. But I bet most of us had a different first association. Bitteschön. Apocalypse Now, the 1979 movie directed by Francis Ford Coppola about the, the horror of the Vietnam War. Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Apocalypse Now, it made me think in which other movies, in which context Wagner's music has been used. So I did some digging and came up with a list of 10 movies or TV shows and they can be placed mainly in two categories war movie and non-war movie slash comedy. Interesting contrast. At the end of this video I will show you two surprising clips of movies in which the Valkyrie uh, motive was used as well and I'm pretty sure that most of you have never seen them so stay tuned. But let's start with the first category, war movies. An interesting question is, why did Francis Ford Coppola use this specific music as a soundtrack to show the, the atrocities humans are able to commit on other humans? First, I would say that the music itself is highly energetic and intense with its um, bold brass fanfares and driving rhythms. Dun, da, 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 dum. This conveys for sure a sense of power and momentum making it suitable for scenes depicting military action and conflict. And secondly, more importantly, the ride of the Valkyries is of course associated with the Valkyries, mythical female figures in Norse mythology who choose the slain warriors worthy of entering Valhall. This association with heroism and glory aligns with the themes often explored in war movies where soldiers are portrayed as brave and noble fighters. You may think about that whatever you want. And of course, thirdly, it fits the, that Wagner's music often is associated with the Nazi regime who initiated wars, whose only goal was to eliminate, to extinct other non-German human beings. Lovely. Before this is getting too dark, let's have a look at our second clip. It's from a Japanese anime TV series called Gate. And I'm pretty sure you will have no problem identifying the movie Gate is, let's say, homaging.
next example, a very strange sci-fi movie called Watchmen. After the, in certain circles, a famous cartoon. I found this movie almost unbearable to watch, but I heard it has its cult followings. Again, it is somehow connected to the Vietnam War, I don't know how, and is showing the killing and death in a very graphic way. I cut those scenes out, so this will be a very short clip. From movies we move on to another TV show, The Wire. A TV show which Barack Obama named as one of his favorites and not Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Hmm. The Wire for sure has more cultural significance than Brooklyn Nine-Nine and that's why Obama became president and not I. Damn it. The scene we see is from season 3, episode 12. And again it's about men hunting down other men. Unit 1, the Unit 2. Unit 2, standing by. Deal's made. Unit 2 to Sector 3. Move on to Winchester Homes. 10 4 we're moving. Unit 2 to Sector 2. Move on to Copper's Plant. Roger that. Units responding 2700 Over the top, gentlemen. With this we leave the war category behind us and move on to lighter usage of Wagner's music. Rango, an animated movie situated in the Wild West with a charming lizard, ugly but charming lizard as main protagonist. If you have children you might have seen it. The scene you will see is extremely fast, extremely chaotic, extremely absurd, but in the end entertaining, entertaining for us, not for poor Rango. You might have heard of Rango, but have you heard of Small Soldiers? Me neither. It's a comedy about toy soldiers or action figurines which become sentient and declare war on humans. Not a great movie, but the young Kirsten Dunst can be seen in a leading role and that is at least something. Again war, again helicopters, yeah, it's getting repetitive, I know, but it's the last clip of this kind, I promise. We have met the enemy and he is you. What? <laughs> As promised, no more helicopters. Instead, some ghosts. Definitely believe in ghosts. 
Here comes Casper, a cute and very friendly little ghost who lives in a castle together with his poltergeist uncles. And those uncles are not as nice as him. the smell of napalm in the morning. It must be one of the most iconic quotes in film history, together with you can't handle the truth, which is from? Write me the correct answer in the comment section below. But now, feast your eyes on one of the most iconic films of the 20th century. The Blues Brothers with Tom Belushi and Dan Aykroyd, directed by John Landis. And to be honest, every great movie has to include a nice car chase. And the Blues Brothers movie delivers. But why using the Ride of the Valkyries for this scene? Well, it's obvious. Belushi and Aykroyd are chased by Nazis and that is more than enough reason. Always loved you. Those of you who did the math know that this was the eighth clip already. And as mentioned in the beginning, here are the two films which surprised me the most. The first one is a milestone in American cinematography, praised for its technical achievements. At the same time, it is a highly, a highly controversial movie since it was absolutely racist and an advocate of white supremacy. I'm talking about The Birth of a Nation from 1915, directed by D.W. Griffith. 
It is considered to be, and I quote, the most controversial film ever made in the United States. And the Ride of the Valkyries is used as a soundtrack to the attack of an army of Q Klux Klan warriors. Oh. <laughs> Maybe Coppola got the idea to use this music from Birth of a Nation? I don't know, but it might be possible. The contrast to our last clip couldn't be sharper. Otto e mezzo, eight and a half by Federico Fellini. The metafictional narrative of this film centers around a movie director who suffers from a creativity crisis while working on an epic science fiction film. Clearly a reflection of Fellini's own crisis after he has completed his last, his eighth movie. To see Wagner's music used in such a non-aggressive and peaceful setting almost came to me as, as a shock. That's it. Ten examples of how Wagner's Ride of the Valkyries have been used or misused, I don't know, in movies and TV shows. What do you think why especially this music has been used so often? Let me know in the comments and please let me know as well what you think about how Wagner himself would have reacted if he could have seen these movies. I mean, he for sure was a strange dude, a weird dude, who said and wrote some questionable things, but I guess he would not be happy that this music is so closely associated with war and killing and mass murder. What a light-hearted ending for this video. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, leave me a like or subscribe, that would help a lot. I hope I will see you again next time. Until then, please take care and ciao.